G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing in the color yellow as the Abyssid Dynasty, we've got Snooper. And on the south side of the map, playing as the English in the color orange, it's Fate Jan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lippany. We're here on Lippany, one of the few open maps that remain. In fact, I wouldn't even call it an open map anymore. Honestly, when you when you see the way that things connect in the middle like this on some spawns, I, I almost be I'm almost tempted to call it the closed map, but we'll kill we'll call it an open map for now. Anyway, we've got ourselves two top ten players at the moment. Now they're top ten at the moment. Uh, now that's because a lot of people at the moment. Uh, I've said a, I've said so many at the moments that I apologise in advance. We're less than a minute into this video, and you've already been hit with seven of them. Currently, <laughs> currently, there's not a lot of people on the rank ladder playing. Everybody's doing customs on Smurf accounts uh, in different languages, because we've got Golden League Two on the way. And for anybody who's watching this right now. In two hours time, since, well, two hours after the video gets posted, Golden League's going to be beginning, uh, and it, the, it's going to be the main event. The main event's going to be starting. I'm going to be casting with Litacore, so I want you to come along. For anybody wondering, that's 15 GMT. That's 10 a.m. Eastern for Americans out there, and 2 a.m. in the morning for us Australians over on the East Coast. So, uh, I want you to come say day. Come check it out. It's, it's going to be a huge event. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, these guys will be playing as well. Both Snooper and Fei Chan will both be there. So I'm looking forward to it. And of course, go check them out as well. They're both content creators streaming live over on Twitch. So go say good day to them and, uh, and get, show them a little bit of love. But we've got ourselves a bit of an interesting opening. So Fei Chan going to be opening up with a classic Man at Arms opening here from the English. Going to be looking to hit the gold, but you can see Snoop has already taken in all the gold that he needs. He is completely off it. He spots this out and he says, well, don't mind if I do. One of the things to note is that there's a... Uh, I, I, I just took a swig of my drink. Just took a swig of my drink. I, I, need, I need to start drinking more. I need to start drinking less. But I, I need to start drinking more when I'm casting, I think. Uh, it, it helps out with the voice a little bit. But uh, one of the things to note, the men at arms, they, they work in multiple ways here. So first and foremost, you're going to be stopping one of the key timings that the Abbasid are looking for. So they, they want wheelbarrow. They want all of their upgrades. So we take a look, you know, fresh foodstuffs as, as, a, as a possibility. Um, and also things like, you know, Fertile Crescent. A really nice technology uh, that's available to you as the Abyssid Dynasty. And you can no longer get those as early as what you'd like. You're going to have to invest in an archery range. Look to try and get a camel out or maybe some archers of your own. And the second town center. Not going to be... No, no chance of that bad boy coming online either. Now, you can drop a barracks and you can try and fight against these men at arms. But with the armor that they've got, it's just not possible. Even two spears aren't going to be able to deal with a single men at arms. And of course, they're going to be able to meet up, link up. And yeah, you're going to be in a whole world of hurt. But... At this point in time, it's a culture wing opening. A culture wing opening? Do we have a fast castle on the hands? Excuse me? I don't think I've ever... <laughs> what? Snooper? Oh, he's mixing things up. He's going big right now. It is going to be a castle, a culture wing opening. He's got to be going fast castle, right? There's no other way that I could possibly think. And look at this. So Snooper really playing outside the box or thinking outside the box. You, you can think about it from the perspective of the absent, right? Like, what do, we, what do I want to do? Okay, I want to I want to age up, but I want to get my, my technologies, my upgrades. Can I do that? No, I can't do that. Why not? I can't access gold. I want to get a town center. Can I do that? No, can't do that. What else can I do? I can get my golden age. And that's exactly what Snooper looks to do here. One, two more buildings coming down, and he's linked up a third and a fourth. That should give him... He needs one more after this. Uh, and then once that's done, he's going to be sitting on, on that... Uh, he's going to be sitting on that level one golden age pretty early on in this game. There's the next house that goes down. So four minutes and, and 15 seconds into the game, and he will be sitting in a very tight, a very nice little position. We'll check in over on the other side of the map. Fei Chan, what are you up to? Looks like it's just going to be... Just going to be a council hall opening. Nothing too crazy. No Abbey of Kings opening here. And I think the big question for me is where does... Or how does Snooper look to play this? Because... He's got a lot of wood, and I mean, he's going to be able to drop it down, throw down the archery range, get out an archer, and then slowly tap away at the um, at, at the, the men at arms. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it feels like it's not really going to provide much oomph. And he's going to go for a stable instead. I think this is probably the right choice. Moving into the stable here is going to allow him a little bit more flexibil flexibility. rather. Uh, it works well also considering the fact that your enemy's going Council Hall, and you've spotted that out, so you can shut down any potential archers. So it makes sense from Snooper's perspective, and we just see an archery range coming out. So... Do we have a potential feudal age on the on the cards, or at least a, a feudal age battle on the cards? We'll ride on board with Fei Chan and see how she's doing. 
We've got the mill going down. 166 gold in the bank at the moment. So going to be looking for, at, at the very least, wheelbarrow. Could also be going into something like double broad axe as an option. Town center going to be firing down on that men at arms. Not a lot of damage taken, though. Does spot out the stable. So enough information there. Obtained. And I, I think that Faye's probably got two choices, right? Number one is just commit the men at arms and look to try and sack them. Keep your enemy off gold as long as possible. Number two, try and get the men at arms out of there. We can see the men at arms on the backside still causing a bit of havoc. The, the horsemen did come out, but now going to be heading over towards this west side. And look at this. We've got ourselves our archer for an archer coming out. Age up comes through from Faye at 5 minutes 42. Not a bad little timing right there. And we do see a mining camp. Now going to be going down on a fair few vills coming out here. So second TC territory is where we're heading with this one. And culture wing is just going to be such a curious thing. Okay, so what do you get from the culture wing? So the culture wing is going to be reducing the cost of all technologies by 20%. But most notably, it's going to be reducing the cost of your age up. So your subsequent age ups that are due to come through, whether that's castle age, imperial age, all of them are going to be reduced by 20%. And that's quite a fair bit when you think about it, right? Like if you're going from 1200, 600, down to what, what would it be like 480 on the gold and then uh 960 on the food that's pretty damn decent man that is that is really really good all right a lot of villagers down here on the south side Faye doing work got the spearman just chilling out here for the moment as well so i'm curious what kind of direction Faye looks to go into i when i'm i'm playing in this position I think the most important part is working out what your enemy's up to because you ideally want to go 2TC Fast Castle. But the problem is you've got no idea what Snoop is up to. Like, uh, you, unless you can recognize the culture wing, and I don't think people probably could, or at least I don't think you'd be looking for it, right? Like, the main thing you're going to be looking for is an economic wing, but even then, like, you, you spot out the culture wing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, like, sitting there throwing out questions like, what's he going to do, Fast Castle? So... Yeah, I think it's a bit, a bit of an interesting play, but Faye doing the right thing, spotting this one out, it all just comes down to scouting right here to know how much greed you can get away with because you want to go for that second town center. We do see the second TC going to get dropped down. Where's the best spot to drop it down? It sounds like she just goes over west side, uh, which is typically the best side. Uh, and uh, th this does get scouted out by Snoopers. Now, Snooper can make a decision. Does he look to go for a town center himself? You can see only a handful or only two villagers here, which leads me to believe he could even be thinking about going for a potential all-in in the feudal age. Blacksmith thrown down. I tell you what, if there's ever been a, a sign of an all-in, it's got to be a blacksmith nice and early on in, in the feudal age, especially against a civilization like the Abbasid dynasty. This civilization likes to avoid aggression. So when you see that blacksmith, you're like, mm, okay, we're, we're getting the business. We're getting in, we're, we're, we're getting in gear. Uh, so this is kind of interesting, right? Like culture wing into blacksmith. What kind of upgrades does Snooper even look to pick up yet? Because we don't see a whole lot that have come through. Nothing on the lumber camp, nothing on the mill, and nothing at all through the blacksmith, obviously, just yet. But now they're starting to tickle, tickle their fancies. And look at this. We do have a castle age on the way. Finally coming through for Snooper. So it was that fast castle. Uh, and so the, the best indicator of a fast castle is, is going to be typically villagers on gold. And that's exactly what Faye is looking at right here. Villagers on gold. She'll see eight vills on gold and she'll say, okay, that's fine. I know you're probably going castle with that. And then we're going to see military wing coming out. Now, when the military wing gets constructed, I don't know exactly where that is. I think it's, yeah, okay, there it is. So she'll spot that and she'll say, okay, he's aging up. And then that should give her clearance to age up as well. And we see that that is indeed the plan. Eight villagers down here on gold, beginning the farm transition. Beautiful little farm spot as well. Not the best. Oh, oh, that is awkward. This, oh, this is not a good timing. This is a really bad timing. Look how much gold she's got in the bank. Only 157. She will have to evacuate here. She could look for a men at arms to try and help defend, but this is just going to stall it out so much. It's going to buy Snooper so much time. This is the, the perfect timing right here from Snooper. And even in the event this outpost gets up, it's not going to be able to do that much, right? Like the, the, the archers are still going to be able to come in. They look to pick up a villager. They managed to get one as well. Longbow going to be coming out, helping to defend. Spears moving in on the front side. Not a whole lot of damage. Just Spear Longbow coming out for now. But so much damage just being done by Snooper right there. Uh, takes out the villager. That wasn't the big part. The big part was just the delay of the Castle Age. Realistically, probably delayed Faye by close to a minute here, I, I would suspect. Maybe a little bit less. Maybe like 40 seconds, something like that. Uh, but Wolf going to get in on the action. Take a, take a piece of... Take a piece of the action, yeah. So, unfortunately, there's not really a good spot for Faye to throw down the next uh, the next farm. So, like, the best spot would have been, like, an 8x8 right here. 8x8? I don't know if that's the right term. Uh, but, but yeah, like, 
you can see right here, this is a little bit too far away from the town center. So this is just one of those things when it, where it comes to like base building and how important it is, even on, on civilizations like the English, just to master the base building. Because ideally, you'd love to have that barracks at the front, these houses right here, up next to the lumber camp, and then you can slot that mill in with all those farms right next to the TC. There's the age up coming through now at the 10 minute mark. Looks like the scout does go down, but at the same time, a counterattack coming in. Fortunately, the outpost is going to be able to provide some pretty decent cover fire here. Longbow slowly teeing off towards these archers. And the spearman looking to try and get a piece of the action. Look at him go. Unfortunately, he, oh, he manages to take out the horseman. Well done to the spear. I'll give, you, I'll give him 10 points for that. And Faye still trying to work her way up to Castle Edge. And this is the part that is really concerning for me because that transition to Castle has been quite slow for Faye. And ideally, you want to try and get up as soon as possible. Because now that your enemy's up, remember that the military wing was the elected uh, age up. So it means that there's going to be camels on the field here as well. Uh, and I'm sure if we go take a look over on the enemy side of the map, there's the camels. So these guys should be able to chase out any scouts or any, any potential cavalry. Not that the English is going to be making any. We do see the moss coming down. So the Abbasid Dynasty Fast Castle is coming through. And Snoop is going to be the pioneer of it. At the same time, we do see counter walls coming in look at this we've got walls coming in from snooper snooper looking to wall his enemy in and say you're not stuck in here with me mate i'm stuck in here with you wait no does it go the other way anyway <laughs> anyway you guys get the point it's uh it's, it's meant to go a specific way uh, but we do see now that Faye is still struggling with regard to uh food income sitting at only 600 food a minute and obviously wanting to train units and train villages it's just not gonna cut it's not gonna be enough to cut through Men at arms coming in. This is this is going to be causing a lot of havoc. And we can see how many villagers go idle as a consequence. Town Center going to be helping out with a little bit of damage. But we do see plus two ranged armor coming in as well for Snooper. He's getting in all these upgrades. And it, it is an insane Abbasid in all in that we've got right now happening. I don't even think I, I saw this as a, as a potential prospect. But the timing on this is pretty decent. 11 minutes 30 was, I think, the first men at arms. Now, in the event Faye can get up to Castle Age, she can hold this because of the crossbowman from the Council Hall. The problem is getting up to the Castle Age. She hasn't been able to get there. And in a perfect world, she would have been able to, but I don't know whether it was just a bit too many resources spent on, on units or, or not enough focus on the farms early enough or what it was that happened, but definitely the timing on this a little bit off. And so now those men-at-arms continuing to, to cause havoc in the base right now for Snooper. Or for, rather, <laughs> rather for face snooper just having a having a great time camels on the south side keep in mind these camels have got so much health and now the mosque gonna start working on those relics the first one of the game gets picked up taken from the center one of the contested relics and at the same time we've got walls now coming in as well for snooper he's doing a great job with this early aggression now keep in mind as the english you can make your own men at arms to try and deal with the enemy men at arms the only problem is your men at arms are going to be down one armor. They're also going to be down a significant amount of health and a significant amount of attack. Two attack, 35 health. So it's you, you can do it. It's just not advisable. I, I would advise against it. You, you really need to get to Castle. You re <laughs> really need to get to Castle. Faye needs to be doing everything she possibly can right now to get to Castle Age. And it's just so hard. We take a look at her upgrade. She's picked up most of the important ones. Wheelbarrow Horticulture. They're the two big ones. But she just needs to focus, try and get to Castle Age. She outnumbers her enemy quite significantly and should be able to hold that pretty handedly. So well played to her in that regard. But still... She's stuck. And look at Snooper just walling in absolutely everything right now. And to be honest, as, as the English, you don't really care that much. <laughs> go go for it. Thanks for the walls. Like, I, I don't mind, man. I, I've, I've got plenty of space back here for my farms. I'm just going to keep farming my own business. And, uh, and we'll call it a day. But the front wall has been denied. The wall in comes through for Snooper. I do like this from Snooper a lot. If you can afford the actions per minute, then definitely get on that hype train because that, that is always a, a, a worthwhile investment. Next relic going to get picked up as well by Snooper. It's going to be this one over on the western edge. At the same time, the meta-arms able to force away the Abbasid meta-arms. And now Snooper going to be falling behind when it comes to economy. Now, keep in mind when it comes to economy, Snooper's got those relics that are working for him, but also additional town centers. Look at this. Snooper, you cheeky devil. How do you get away with it? How, how can you afford to throw down two more TCs without the Fertile Crescent discount? That's kind of wild. I mean, I'm impressed. And look at this. Counter walls now coming up from Faye. Faye saying, I'm not going to let you wall me in. Or if, if you are going to wall me in, I'll, I'll wall my... <laughs> You're not going to wall me in. I'm going to wall me in. It's, <laughs> it's the classic stop punching yourself in the face moment. 
All right. No sign of crossbows yet from Snooper, which is a, a little bit interesting. Uh, ideally, I, what I'd love to see from Snooper, and it's exactly what we're seeing now, is more upgrades. He's got the plus one melee armor, or melee uh, attack. And I think this is 100% the direction he needs to go. Needs to look needs to look big for the uh, the upgrades. But look at this on the other side. Fei Chan going to be spotting this out. And we see a white tower coming down. Get out of town. White tower coming down on the forward gold. Look at this. Oh, this could be big. We are seeing th this is this is this is getting good. I'm starting to get excited now. <laughs> oh, now now we got ourselves a ball game, ladies and gents. This is getting good. Uh, but I don't know. Is is Fei just giving up these units? I think probably realizing that they're all dead and looking to try and pick up. Don't do it. Don't do it, Faye. Don't do it, Faye. No, Faye. You're going to just give him men at arms. How? <laughs> Where did that damage come from? Beautiful job by Faye. Absolutely calculated. And, uh, and I mean, at the, at the same time, Snoop has just gone to three TCs. Keep in mind, he... he, he oh, actually... Never mind, because this is abs this is actually fine. I, I, I thought Snooper's house was on fire, and he was like, this is fine. No, this is actually fine. The fire has been extinguished. He's still got fresh food stuff, so he has cheaper villagers. So it's not a big deal. You get this without economic wing now. Abbasid Didacy is actually pretty legit when you think about it in that regard. You don't have to commit to an economic wing anymore. And there's not that great a text in there. I mean, like, you get the good stuff, like Fertile Crescent and Agriculture, which are both really, really good tanks. But at the same time, I mean, like, they, these are really valuable high-impact high, high impact technologies that you can get. Especially, like, um, preservation of knowledge. Absolutely massive. Alright, well, the age ups come through. Faye is up. The White Tower is alive. And now the question is, where are the crossbows? And we interestingly see just longbows coming out. Now, th this is the equivalent of four archery ranges on your screen here. Uh... I don't know why we're going into veteran crossbow or veterancy on the longbows. All we need right now is just crossbows. Just just make 15 crossbows and call it a day, Faye. You'll be fine. Defense coming in solid for it, though. Beautiful little economy. Lovely looking base at the moment. Man at arms just heading back to defend against a single man at arms. Crossbows having a bit of a tough time. The consequence of not building up that mass. Ideally, you want to be building up to uh, a nice number of, uh, of crossbows and then you, you're very capable of defense but until then it's just gonna be longbows coming out how much damage are these guys doing they're sitting on nine damage compared to the six armor of the uh of the men at arms so they're doing effectively three damage a pop it's just not worth it now now Faye might be in a little bit of trouble these men at arms are getting through to the backside, and this this is where it all comes down to having the uh the, the farms closer to the town center doesn't it? The, it, it, it there's so much fallout from that as a consequence more expansion coming in Four archery rangers getting dropped down just when you thought that the production from the White Tower and the Council Hall would be enough. You were mistaken, my friends. Crossbows also coming in from Snooper. So Snooper looking to add in more and more, and we do see the village account going to be almost even Stevens right now. 65 versus 66. Remember, Snooper does have the scaling aspect. A little bit of a counterattack on the other side of the map as well. Men at arms trying to find out whether they can look to try and take out the enemy. Four relics picked up. At the moment, for Faye, or rather, for, for Snooper, Faye going to be just sitting on the one. Not actually taken yet, but it is safe behind the walls. I'm going to grab a swig of my drink. Mm. All right, so... I think the interesting thing to me is that Faye didn't go into crossbows sooner. The age up came through. And for me, I feel like the, the most important thing for you as the English is just straight into crossbows. Straight into crossbows and just call it a day and you, you you've got some really crazy production here just sitting here four archery rangers but she's going to drop down more archery rangers now so four racks of four archery rangers together with the white tower white tower does have the ability to make rams which is always very fun but look at this more walls coming up more defenses coming up in the middle of the map for snooper and he is starting to really raise that village account up still sitting on the three town centers capturing the sacred sites as well snooper playing out of his mind right now just doing everything and every one watch out Watch out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you, you've seen Snooper. He's a handsome guy. Watch out, ladies. Uh, <laughs> lock up your... <laughs> I'm trying... What's the meme? Uh, <laughs> I can't think of the meme. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Snooper's here. Sorry, Snooper. You know I love you. I, I love Snooper. I, I love a little bit of Snoop. He, he's good fun. Second sacred site now getting captured. There's that crossbow mass that we were looking for. Starting to build up slowly. Uh, ideally, you'd love to see a few more spears mixed in as well, just to try and help. And, and then you can start even thinking about Siege from here. But I think Faye's, Faye's doing well. The issue that Faye's got is that 
she's lost a fair bit of workers. You can see right now losing 20 workers. Now, to be fair, she's managed to kill 12 of her enemies. So it's, it's relatively even on that front. Uh, but uh, it's still quite a bit. Now this mass is starting to look a little bit scarier from Faith. But th this is the number of, of units where it's starting to look like um, uh, Siege, Siege is going to be imminent. At least that, that's the way I feel for it. So, th okay, there we go. Faye now dropping in a Springled. Uh, Springled. Expecting that her enemy is going to be reacting uh, with a Mangonel. And that's definitely the right choice. Look at this. Look, This is what we're talking about. Like, you can just kind of sense when the mass gets big enough, when there's too much infantry to deal with. Uh, any other way, it's like, it's, it's Mangonel time. And Faye obviously knew that. She gets the Springled out from the White Tower. So we will be seeing that White Tower diff coming through. I don't know about you guys. I've been <laughs> I've been watching a lot of, of Pokemon. Uh, the new Pokemon games came out. I say new. I think they came out in like November or something. I was a bit late to the party. Uh, I don't know, even know why I bought them. I, to, to be honest, I, I bought them for my wife. I'm like, hey, uh, here's, here's a game you can play. And then I just like, I, I think I've sunk like 80 hours into the game or something. But I've been watching Wolfie. Uh, on uh, on YouTube, and I've just been loving it. He, he always mentions the World Champ Diff. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to... I think it's called World Champ Diff. I think, yeah, the, the WCD. Anyway, so I've, just, I've, I've been saying a Diff a lot more. You kind of, you pick up things when you watch other creators. I, rem I remember, <laughs> I remember uh, for anybody who knows Potato McWhiskey, uh, he used to watch a lot of my content and I, I had a crux that I would always say. I, I would say this one thing. I would say the all important and he would he picked it up and he started saying it and uh, someone called him out on it and uh, and yeah he said i've been watching too much drongo uh so th th that was one of those moments where it's like you know you, you've watched any anyway drongo get to the action that's enough talking get to the action drongo we got we got crazy amounts of action here this this isn't it's not going to amount to anything though you got a white tower that you're pushing up against snooper keep dreaming son you're gonna have to head back to the drawing board bring a trebuchet bring at least a, a few mangonels there with you and the cleanup crew on the backside fake trying to even up the village account here I tell you what, having a tough time to, to do it, but we've got that textiles through and as well as that plus two ranged armor. But he does get, does she does get the last one. Men at arms chasing after the Mangonel. Crossbowman doing a decent job of, of defending. And this is, this is going to be, a, <laughs> this is going to be pain throughout the game. Spring on emplacement, outposts firing at each other. We just got to kind of sit here and, and take the, uh, take the alerts. There's, there's no way to escape those. It doesn't matter who we're viewing. We're going to be stuck with those alerts, aren't we? Over towards the west side. Looks like those sacred sites have been cleaned up. The crossbow battle unfolding. So th this is where like a, a transition to horsemen or knights could be decent. But you've got to just remember how much infrastructure your enemies got with regard to their barracks. And that if you move into cavalry, spears are just going to be flooding onto the field. There's no real chance of any, any any way that you uh you take your enemy by surprise and that they can't react with you. I've just, I've just got to do my best. Oh my lord, we've got a lot of villagers getting caught out of position. Snooper might be in trouble. More and more villagers going to be going down here. He manages to catch out plenty of them, taking out what about what looks to be at least four, five, six villagers. So pretty decent job there by Faye, evening up the village account. Ninety four to ninety three. We enter the twenty three minute mark of the game. Let's take a look at the production. See how we're doing down here. Nothing too crazy to report. Imps do look likely. I, f I feel like this is a pretty decent window. Th this is very dangerous right now, pushing up with this much ranged infantry. No spearmen whatsoever. Uh, where's the cavalry? There's the cavalry. I mean, it, it is lancers. So they're going to be dealt with quite e easily compared to, say, horsemen, uh, if they were to outnumber. He's got a good little spot here. This is a nice little concave. I think he should be able to deal with this pretty easily, just simply because there's so many crossbows. Don't don't run, just fight. This is this is you can win this. Yeah, you can you can one shot these things. Don't worry about it. There we go. There now we're talking. Now we're talking. Hey, what's going on here? Did I miscalculate there? I must have miscalculated. But uh, gonna get cleaned up now. Does eventually get caught out of position. The rest of the men at arms and crossbows coming through. And so now we see a transition into spears. And I, I wonder whether we're going to see it, but I, I do think the best English comp, I've talked about this before, might actually be Spear Crossbow. Spear Crossbow, the same way that the, uh, the, the same way that the Mongols play it. The only difference is that the Mongols have got that movement speed from the Yam network, whereas the English have just got a little bit more tenacity in, in their units just because of that, uh, that network of citadel or network of castle bonus that they've got. Ignore me going over there onto that east side. That's so frustrating. And look at these little attacks, these little raids coming through from Faye. 
doing plenty of damage here. Able to take out a knight. Gonna continue drawing units all over the map. Still more production coming through. So numbers not looking terrible. Let's let's compare the pair at the moment and see how we're doing. 100, 104. So you're sitting at about what? What's that? 3.6, 3.7? Uh, and they're in, in total. So about 4.1k against the opponent. So about 3.8k. So pretty close on the economy. About 300 resources a minute difference between these two. Uh, that, that's all coming down to those relics. I mean, it's four relics against zero. Four relics is 320 resources a minute. So I guess that really explains it. Uh, so there you go. But Fade starting to look better. And there's a part of me that thinks maybe these walls that Snooper made kind of like went against him, right? Like it, it just gave Faye an opportunity to draw walls herself, counter wall, and have this really nice defensive pocket that she can play from. And as the English, that's exactly what you want. Now, granted, she's run out of gold on the backside, but she's got gold on the front. So she's going to be A-OK -okay in that regard. But now the push coming through. This is where I was talking about the fact that you'd want crossbow spear. Crossbow spear just feels so good in these situations. Your enemy's massing up all these lances. Longbows, they're not going to be able to achieve much. I mean, they're able to take out the crossbows on the backside, but what do the crossbows really do if you're just running a whole bunch of unarmored units and now focusing down the wall? Not the wall, Faye! No, not like this. Back towards that white tower, though. The Springles are going to be exposed, I think. She sees a couple of them. Well, he, uh, Snooper sees a couple. Snooper, Snooper sees four Springles right there. Now all five are going to expose themselves. Spears moving out towards the front. Crossbows in on the backside. Village is going to be taken out here as well. Faye got to be careful. She's already lost 35 workers this game. Needs to be careful to avoid losing any more. One Springle does go down on the front. Second one almost goes down. We see that Treb making work over on this east side of the map. They're doing a really good job to hold on here against this Snooper. One base, fast castle. Abyssin play that we've we've never really seen before. I mean, we've seen it on water maps, but we've just never seen it like this. And look at the infantry mass. Not a single Mangonel. There's the Mangonel. This is the power of the White Tower right here. Pop it out on the front. Unleash all hell. Here's the Mangonel. Bring it out. Bring it out. No. The wrong, the wrong spot. It needed to come out right here and just unleash its load. That's not good. That's not good, villagers. Run, villagers, run. Mangadel, decent shot. Pretty, not too bad. It hits about five units there. Villagers going to be running back the other way now. Fortunately, a lot of them did survive. Still got that uh, that extra attack speed coming through, but no crossbows back here. Going to be using the villagers to tank up most of that. They, they managed to head back to safety. Look at the Vills firing off here. Need some more crossbows. Sprinkles on the back, not really helping out too much, but it's not a huge deal. And now Snooper continues walling. No sign of stone walls. I suspect that's because they're probably going to be playing tournament rules, which is just no stone walls. And we do have the other rule is no keeps. Uh, but keep in mind that you can make uh, you can make keeps uh, that are landmarks. That's it. So you can make your white tower, you can make your red palace, but you can't make keeps. And you can see as a consequence, we've got outposts being spammed everywhere uh, at the moment. This is, this is a, a much more interesting way. So th these are the Golden League rules for anybody who's wondering. So Golden League rules. Th these are the same rules that are going to be played this weekend. So make sure you come along. Make sure you come say good day. As I said before, 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern or 2 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. The new keep. <laughs> you versus the guy she tells you to worry about. The keep is you. This is the guy she tells you... Wait, wait, the guy she tells you to worry about? Oh, God, I, I meant the guy she tells you not to worry about. Well, that's awkward. If she's telling you to worry about a guy, <laughs> I'd, I'd be pretty worried about that guy as well. Look at that. Look at, the, <laughs> look at those outposts coming up. Snooper's base is just absolutely sprawling, though, isn't it? It's kind of wild, the extent that Snooper's gone. How many farms are we talking over here for Snooper? 52 farms at the moment. Not that crazy. I thought it would have been more. Compare that over to Faye. Faye's sitting on 37. Which is, I guess, pretty standard for an English player at this point in the game. We do see the potential for Imperials to be coming through. 1920 and 960. Wall nice and safe over on this side of the map. Outpost going to be helping out a little bit as well. Trev just getting in on the action. But I can I can feel Imperials. There, 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 there we go. Wingard Palace gets thrown down. Going to be put in on the front. Still quite open towards this position, but I'm, I'm loving this siege. If I'm Faye right now, I'm just spamming out like 30, 30 spears. 
30 spears, maybe a few crossbows. And that's it. This is a beautiful composition. Want to get to Imperial? Want to get roller shutter triggers? And just have a field day out there. Make sure you get your elite spear upgrade as well. And you, you are having a laugh, my friends. Snoop are going to be thinking about the same thing, though. Now, does he look to go into the trade wing? If I'm him, I'm probably going trade wing. I mean, improved processing, it's not really going to be helping you out a lot. He goes for the economic wing. Interesting. He's got the option of trade over here on this north side. And this would help him out a huge amount. He does switch it up to the trade wing. It makes a lot more sense to be going trade wing here. Really good call from Snooper. Uh, mixing that one up. Uh, or fixing that one up, rather, we should be saying. So the Imperial Age has come through. Where, where are the upgrades? Let's take a look. He's picking up Elite Longbowman. Out of all things, Elite Longbowman. It could be what turns the tide here. Manganel numbers are looking solid, but not enough crossbows really to defend. Only sitting on eight crossbows here. Needs a bit of a bigger mass. Should be able to hold on. The Manganel should be able to, to lead and deal quite good damage here against the men at arms. When you've got men at arm, when you've got numbers of Manganels like this, you're in a pretty solid spot, but we're going to enter into the cinematic mode right now because it is time to get it on. Or was it time to get it on? And now it's time to break free. I don't want to get DMCA'd, but at the same time, I want to break free. Okay, that's enough. All right, we can hear attacks happening over on that east side. It, it doesn't really seem like much. They're just fighting over gold. Don't worry about it. It's not that important. We'll bring back in the UI so we can see how far Snoop has got before he ages up, before he breaks free of his chains. I mean, technically at this point, Faye's the one that's been chained uh, by Snooper and and, and uh, Faye is breaking free. Look at, look at these bills though. Someone forgot the mining camp. Spring and placement going to be doing work. There's the mining camp. Oh, there. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. The triple, baby. Oh, baby. It's a triple. Is, is that the mum get the camera? No. It's it's a triple rainbow? Double rainbow? It's starting to look like a triple rainbow? I can't remember what the triple meme is. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to Google that after. But there, there is a meme about triples. So anyway, at this point, Faye needs to have and should have pushed. Uh, you need to push. Once you've aged up to Imperial, you want to hit all those Imperial upgrades. And then straight away, boom, boom, push. You want to... Boom, boom, push. That, that's what you thats what you got to do. Uh, let's take a look at the base of Snooper. L look at this. Look at this crazy base from Snooper. Absolutely sprawling. The amount of outposts he's got just everywhere. Dotting the map. Spring on emplacements. I kind of like it, honestly. I, I, I do actually like this a lot um, compared to, say, the keeps. The keeps are really good for locking down a single spot, but they're so difficult to deal with. Whereas the outposts, I mean, they're, they're also difficult to deal with because... There is a chance that your trebuchet shots will miss and it kind of delays you. And so it gives you your enemy more chance to heal up. And there's there's a lot of health on these when you think about it, right? 1750 health compared to a keep, which a keep was running like, what, 5k health, I think? I know the White Tower's got 5k. Maybe it's a little bit more. I think it's just 5k, isn't it? So this is like two and a half keeps. Or, or two and a half of these is like a keep. Maybe not two and a half, maybe three. Pretty close to three, actually. A little bit, a little bit over three. A little bit under three, rather. All right. So moving out over towards that east side, looking to try and take the large gold vein. Remember, there is always the prospect of trade. Speaking of trade, we've now got the trading. Oh, we've now got the trading up. Snooper going to be going for it. Let's take a look and see what unique text he's picked up. Whether he's picked up any, and we've got Grand Bazaar going to be coming in. Spice Roads also going to get picked up here, and of course the option for armored caravans. If the need may arise, but I suspect it won't. Abyssid trade, some of the best late game trade in the game. Very easy to transition into. Cheap mark or che cheap traders. So that's it's a huge advantage that they've got. They've also got some of the best techs. Grand Bazaar. Obviously going to be giving them a little bit more resources to work with. A secondary option. And now we've got Snooper. Begins pushing in over from that west side. Look, what upgrades have we got? Elite Men at Arms. That's it. Roller Shutter Trigger's coming through. And we've got a counter attack. Look at this on the back side. He manages to bring all of his units back here to defend. He's got them hidden inside the stealth forest. But look at the, the Manganels. They're really struggling right now. He's trying to unload and uh, trying to unpack them. Manages to get off a few shots. But he's a beautiful starter step micro from Snooper on the back side. Absolutely wonderful. Spring was getting chased down completely. And now a complete surround coming through. And it looks like Snooper going to be able to take a beautiful little victory right here. Having a wonderful time. Definitely going to be happy with how that one turned out for him wonderful flank right there it all just came down to that initial flank and now a counter attack over on the west side of the map Faye, where's the production for Faye? currently Faye, where's the production three spears and a single longbow in queue right now Faye, don't do me like this this is 
We need these are rookie numbers. Look at look at Snooper. Fifteen elite lances, twelve crossbows, two men at arms. That's what I'm talking about. That is where you want to be right now. And now Faye adding in. There's the there's the units finally coming through. Faye waking up and saying, "Oh, that's right. I need to make units. I totally forgot, Drongo. It's all right, Faye. We, we've all been there before. Springled emplacements doing work, but unfortunately the elite upgrades come through for the lances now. And now villagers going to have to be taking the high road out of here as the lances just look to try and cut them down. No textiles upgrade means no extra health on these villagers and more cleanup over on that west side. Trade is well and truly underway for Snooper. He's up to 20 traders. He's looking pretty solid at 118 economic pop. And Fane, a little bit of a difficult position here. It definitely seems like production is, is one of those areas where Fae... Uh, I, I gotta take a look and see how many production facilities has Fae got here. Still four archery rangers, still four barracks. Has not put down any more production facilities in the last 10 to 15 minutes. And that, that is very, very painful because I, ideally here, she needs to just be spamming out units nonstop now down to 140 and the consequence is just no, oh, this is terrible. No gold, no wood, just being starved out of the map. Snooper doing a great job of, of starving Faye. And of course, Snooper's got the, the relics as well. Access to the sacred sites, which he's kept for a, a really long time here. But as Faye picked up enclosures, oh no, Faye! Oh, the ultimate backfire. Backfire, I don't know. The, the, the ultimate anime revenge. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. I'm lost for words. We needed enclosures. We needed enclosures. I'm sitting here wondering, why are we on zero gold a minute, Faye? Not like this. Oh, no. It, it all starts to fall apart. Once again, for our English player, we've casted three English games already on this patch, and every single one has been a loss. Don't tell me this is going to be number four, but I can't help but feel like it will. The, the longer this game goes on. Look at the numbers here for Snooper. Absolutely amazing numbers. Sitting at close to 5k resource income compared to Faye, who's barely cracking over two and a half. Oh, you, I got to tell you right now, it doesn't feel good to be a fan of the English. We want to see the English players rise. Come on, Faye. I, I got to believe, but at the same time, I got to be really... Oh, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Well, it's been a good game. It's been a fair game. It's been a long game. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like <laughs> the game is... About to end, ladies and gentlemen, there are an awful uh, large amount of knights inside the base of Fae. And they have begun killing villagers. Fae now sitting on 78 villagers. Not the spot you want to be at 37 minutes. Definitely not. Continuing to lose villagers. Beautiful micro coming through from Snooper, just making sure he is uh, he's on the move with those knights, looking for more and more vills, hunting them down. And at the same time, defending on the front, beginning to push through. Fade down to 118 population. Snooper sitting at 181. Huge amount of, of resources here if he needs to produce more units. He's having an absolute field day. We see that incendiary arrows coming through. But is it going to make a difference? I can't help but feel like it won't. The main thing is, here is going to come down to gold control. And Snooper at the end of the day just did a really good job of keeping Faye locked inside her base. And even though we can say that, oh, you know, I'm an English player, I don't mind. I can't help but feel maybe delaying the Imperial a little bit longer than what was needed, as well as not picking up the uh, the enclosures, the all-important enclosure technology. It really starts to hurt you. And now, I mean, we're still sitting at zero gold a minute at this point. Villagers have returned back to work over on this east side, but you just can't help but feel... You can't help but feel pain for Faye right now as she tries to find a way back through. And we see the Wingard. It looks like the Wingard army... Was, was that Wingard producing? I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen anything come out of the Wingard at the moment. Could potentially be Trebs, but e even then, I mean, what, what do you even kill with the Trebs? You, you're just kind of defending. It's so hard to defend without stone walls, right? Like, because so typically in these games, you'd just be like, all right, stone wall here, stone wall there. I think that's what makes it so much better. I actually really like this. Can we just get rid of stone walls? Like, don't get me wrong. I love stone walls, but at the same time, it just... It, it slows down the game so much. It's like, well, I'm I'm 200 pop. My enemy's 200 pop. You've just put stone walls across the middle of the map and I've got no way to kill them unless I delete units and build trebuchets. And then I delete units and then all of my palace guards automatically build. And it's like, ah, oh, I forgot to cancel my palace guards. I'm such an idiot. You, uh, that, that was uh, suspiciously specific, I know. <laughs> it was suspiciously specific, but... I mean, at, at this point, with Snooper having trade set up this way, he's up to 43 traders, each trader bringing in 206 gold with 51 food there as well. He, he's in such a great spot. I think the chances of Snooper losing right now are down less than 1%. That's, that's how good this spot is. 
He's just able to continue funneling in production into the base of Faye. And Faye just absolutely no, no response. Down to 113 pop, 71 villagers. And Snooper just continues on the hunt. He does manage to get behind into the other wood line as well. And now all sacred sites have been captured. Snooper turns on the timer and Faye says, that's enough. Fellas, go check out EGC TV tonight. I'll be leaving a link in the description to where you can watch Golden League 2. 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern or 2 a.m. Australian time. Go check out Faye. Go check out Snooper. I'll leave links to them as well. And of course, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.